Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Diedrich's Beach Bar. My guest today is Kyle Meyer. He's a photographer from Norway who specializes in adventure photography and cars, automotive photography, and he's a Sony ambassador, so I'm not the only one who thinks he takes badass photos. And we get along great, you know, we get uh, a lot of shared interests, which is why he's on here for the third time. But before we get to that, here's a word from our sponsors. This show is brought to you by APOS. APOS Audio is an authorized retailer of new audiophile equipment from a growing but carefully curated set of brands. By partnering directly with the brands they carry, they guarantee 100% authenticity of everything they sell. They offer free shipping, lowest price guarantee, APOS second year warranty, and a 45 day return policy on all the products so you can be confident you'll be happy with your purchase. So go to dedirect.blog slash apos, that's D-I-E-D-E-R-I-K dot blog slash A-P-O-S, and that way they know I have sent you to them. Next sponsor is Alert. Alert is an iPhone app for people who travel with food allergies. I know there's not a whole lot of traveling going on right now, but it looks like this COVID shit's almost over. And when it is, you will want to take this in your pocket if you have a food allergy abroad. This app can dynamically generate an allergy flashcard in 44 different languages for the 14 most common allergies. So you can show the local population in their local language what you're allergic to. It works great. I've used it personally in Asia where I don't speak the language, obviously, and I'm still alive. So that's good. Go to alertapp.com or look for alert, that's A-L-L-E-R-T, in the iOS app store to find it. And finally, the final sponsor of the show is Amazon. Everyone uses Amazon. Everyone loves it. It's great. They got everything. If you go to dedirect.blog and you go to the podcast page or click the link in the YouTube description, you will land on Amazon through my affiliate link. And that means if you place an order, Amazon will give me a little kickback on your order it comes out of their end, not your end, so your price is the same. It's just a little thank you from them for sending you to their website, basically. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, Carl Meyer. Enjoy the show, everybody. Ready to go, dude? Yes, sir. There we go. I am ready. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got better hair for it, man. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> I wonder how much longer it is now compared to the uh, last time we talked. It was pretty long last time, I think. That's true. I got one haircut in between now and then. Was it because of the corona or did you just feel like going full rock star? The long hair? The long hair started way before corona. I actually, it started because I was 100% certain that if I grew my hair out, I would look like Kurt Russell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... I bet I have thick enough hair that if I got that long, I would look like Kurt Russell. And then I started to grow it as like, I'm already this far, so why not keep going? And then the idea came into my mind that it'd be cool to like donate it when it's long enough. All right. But then I fell in love with it. <laughs> and now, now I'm stuck with it. Are you going to go like full rock star? Like, let it go? No, if, if it gets longer than this, I got to end it. Oh, well. it's too much. It sucks. I wish I could do I'm, it, man. I, I look like a homeless guy when it gets much longer than it is now. I get, what do you I get, mean? Like, I get like a, it gets all thin and, and shitty and I get like a bald <laughs> spot on the back of my head. It just looks, doesn't look good, man. Uh, wear a hat. It's perfect. Nah, no. Nah. That will fix it. You're just trying to hide nature, you know? This is it Jason Muse, the guy who plays Jay or Jay Muse? Who? He's uh, Jay and Jay and Silent Bob. <laughs> Long hair. It's the same, same thing. Long hair plus a hat, man. That's cute. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that's my style, man. Mm. Could be. Then I need to get a goatee too. I got fat, you know. There you go. And then play bass. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> the fat guy with the goatee. Yeah, that was like the late nineties, early two thousands look for a while, man. Oh yeah. But, uh, oh, that was it, dude. That was I mean who maybe grunge started it. Yeah. Maybe the yeah. whole grunge movement sort of kick started this whole not caring is cool and then not caring about your clothes turn into not caring about yourself. Right. Turn right. into not caring about hygiene. <laughs> maybe that's, who knows? Maybe I'm onto something. Probably yeah, I, not. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you got the long hair already, so. 
Oh yeah. And she's got to stop wiping your ass. There you go. Now I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Well, so how you been, man? Like uh, last time we talked, you you said you uh, were kind of you you didn't have as much photo work as uh, as as usual when when the it's Rona long. just started, and then uh, fuck, was it that long ago? Yeah, 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 that that was brutal. That was crazy. There was un- from March last year to September or something. There was zero work, like zero, nothing. It was brutal. I sat on the couch and I mean, I guess I told the story, but I was just like. I lost so much work in the first week of that and then never came back. But the moment September hit, it seems like everybody, like all my clients, new clients, they all realized like, hey, we still have a lot we have to do this year. Let's just book it on like now sporadically. So it got crazy busy. All right. It was well, insane. It was also the initial scare, I guess, that kind of wore off, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember in the yep, beginning, was, you know, it was people, people thought, you know, everyone was going to die, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And depending on where you were in the world, everybody did die. It was <laughs> strange, but, uh, now nobody seems to care. The vaccine's rolling out. There's a sun over the horizon, I guess is how you could say it. Everybody's yeah. just kind of like, let's go. And now the commercial industry is, is booming, at least in Norway. Cool. Yeah, we're going hard. I was shooting today. It's... Yeah, and you've you've been obviously outside because your uh, face is kind of red from the sun. <laughs> <laughs> does it show? I wonder, like, how long does the fingerprint last? Oh yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I've been out on a boat all day. I was shooting for a um. There's like a a boat sharing company called Skippity. It's like a North European thing where um, it's like a you rent, you pay a monthly fee and you get to just take out a boat whenever you want. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's awesome. It's all the fun of owning a boat without the stress of taking care of one. And is it like um, sailboats or motorboats? Or? Right now it's just motorboats in Norway. They only have 20 boats in Norway, but their plan is to get like 150 by the end of the year. And how big are they and how much does it cost to... to so there's that? two levels. There's um, the one level is like a bow rider. Where you have like the bench that goes around the front of the boat, just like a small, like under 20 foot or whatever. Um, I don't know anything about boats, <laughs> but it's just like a hundred horsepower motor boat where you can just take it out and go mess around and have a picnic out on the water. And then they have like a day cruiser where you have like a little cabin underneath and you can sleep overnight. And, and those are the two sizes right now. But um, I, I'm curious. I'm curious to see where this idea goes because apparently cool. they. They have it in, it's a Finnish company. They have it in Finland. They have it in Stockholm. And apparently it's massive. They have it in Denmark as well. And New Zealand for some reason. That's a good but, idea, uh, man. I mean, oh, apparently it's huge over there. Everyone wants a boat, but the maintenance on those things is just. Uh... Hell yeah, I want a boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> part, of, part of the payment is I got a uh, membership. You got, so, uh, oh, really? Now I, yeah, so now I have a, a boat this summer, which is sweet. That's I never saw really myself nice. as a boat person. I mean, you can tell I'm not much of a boat person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you might become one eventually if you keep. Oh yeah, you know. Check yeah. back in at the end of the year. I'll be brown and, <laughs> and wrinkled. There's <laughs> no chance. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, being on the water is great. One one of my friends has a little boat, and um, in the summer. You always just go out and have a couple drinks and hang out on the water. And if it's really hot, you just jump out and uh, it's nice, man. It's just peace. It's important. You know, away from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you live uh, like near other buildings. Yeah. You live in a city or something. You, you got to have a reason to go get some fresh air. Yeah, man. And you, you got to, you got to take your girl in there, man. That's. Uh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yes, sir. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I'll be doing that a lot this summer, I think. I just got to get a boat license. I don't have that. Do you need a license to to drive one? Yep. Yeah, in Norway, but it's only like a one-day. If you're semi-competent at taking tests, I think it's just like a one-day thing. Okay. But um, I also think it's not done in person anymore because of COVID. So right now, I think you just go to the website, spend one day studying, and you have a boat license, which is... No okay. problem. Yeah. That and I need a hunting license too. 
boat license and hunting license. Those are my goals for this year. Well, I bet there's good hunting there too, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there's plenty around Norway. Um, it's pretty restricted in terms of like how much you're allowed to kill. But um, what what are the gun laws like there? Like, can you can you? Uh, is pretty it tight. Yeah. It's it's hard to get a gun. Um, you qualify basically for like a rifle in the beginning. And then you sort of work your way up through the guns. So like you can qualify for a pistol eventually, but that takes like years on a range and you have to, there, there's a lot. I mean, I'm not an expert. I don't have a gun license, but uh, <laughs> from what I understand, there, there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through. But that's one of those things I, I still just really want to do, you know, just go yeah. and hunt, shoot something and then eat whatever you catch, you know. That's the thing for me is if I'm going to eat meat, I want to be responsible for that meat. Like yeah. I, I want to know that it was killed at my hands. I want to know that it was killed in the wild. I want to know that it lived like the life and that it came to an end because of an, I'm going to say natural predator. A lot of people are going to argue with that, but well, I at mean, this point, humans are natural predators, right? Yeah. It's just, we're just, like we just way up on the, on the food chain, you know? That's yeah, like, exactly. Uh, exactly. But I mean, we, we've been watching, I mean, me and my girlfriend, after all this Netflix, uh, Corona lifestyle shit, <laughs> we've been watching like, uh, we, we saw Sea Spiracy recently. Oh, it's yeah. like, is a scary documentary. It's, I mean, you can tell it's just some guy who has this personal vendetta against fisheries. And I get it for a good reason because most of them are trash and they're terrible. But his solution to the whole thing is stop eating fish. Where I would like the solution to be, I go out and source my own fish. I don't want to trust fisheries to be environmentally friendly. I don't want to trust them to not kill dolphins. I want to trust myself to go out and find the food that I'm eating. Right, back to basics, basically. Exactly. That that's why I want the hunting license. Well, you can do that in Norway, you know. I bet oh yeah. You can just pretty easily just buy a big piece of land there and just live off that, you know. Yeah, I know a few people with farms who have hunting permits. Um, and, uh, some people with land, we can just go up and hunt off theirs. That's and then cool. I think there's public land as well you can hunt from, but um, that I don't know anything about. Okay. That's just a guess. Maybe there's not. Who knows? I have some friends in the States, and, and one of them has, like, uh, his family has, like, a big piece of land where they uh, where there's deer, you know. And... Um, Every time I go there, we have the most amazing barbecue because they have this enormous freezer in the garage filled with meat that they shot themselves. And, you know, it, it's always just, yeah, I was like, man, I want that too. It seems yeah, so great, it. you know? That's it. That's the life. Yeah, give me some of that. Also, just, I like shooting guns. I think it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. At a range or something. I, I think it's a fun hobby. It's a fun thing to get into. Yeah, I don't need to have it at my house. Like I, when when it comes to those kinds of laws, like I don't need a gun under my bed. <laughs> I'll be <laughs> fine. I'll be okay. Um, I don't need the ammo at my house if it doesn't need to be here. I can keep it wherever. It's just I want access to it and I want to be able to use it. Norway's super safe anyway, right? Oh, we're fine. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, there's there's it's pretty much impossible to get a gun here and. It's, um, I think, you can, yeah, well, I think you can, you can get like a weapons license and then you start out with like a 22, which is like a tiny caliber. Well, you, you can still yep. fuck shit up with it, but. Oh yeah. And Kill a squirrel. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I wouldn't <laughs> want to be on the business end of that either. Oh but, no. Squirrels uh, are good eating. <laughs> <laughs> That's good meat. <laughs> I never, I've never had it, man. <laughs> Not me neither. <laughs> This One day, a, okay. when I get my hunting yeah. license. This is a red with a furry tail, you know? That, that's oh, what perfect. they look like to me. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Tastes like chicken. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe, probably. <laughs> I, I don't know. You you, you go know, first. I why, that, why do people say that? Where did that saying come from? Well, chicken tastes like pretty much nothing or anything you, you spice it up with. So yeah. I guess if you, you know... Want to describe the the most generic tasting meat? I guess you end up with chicken because <laughs> that's true. Beef has but a distinct it, taste, and so does pork. Yeah, that's true. But but then, how does everything else taste like chicken? I, I've I, had, I, I, I've had gator in the past, and that kind of tastes like chicken. 
Is yeah. Gator just a generic, like, bland flavor? Yeah, it, it's it's a little bit more chewy than chicken, but the general, it kind of just tastes that. whatever you put on it, you know, it's white meat. Why would you want that? You use some redneck and that's all you have to eat down in the well, Everglades of Florida? You know, I, it was in Louisiana where I ate it in ah, um, yeah, New, New Orleans, good. and they, they got so many, they're like a pest there, you know, there's too many of them, so... So, I'm jealous, man. I'm, I want to go to a Cajun barbecue in New Orleans. Oh, man. I can uh, recommend whatever that. Whatever they got. Oh, what did you, what, why were you in New Orleans? Are you allowed to say? Uh, yeah, I was, um, well, I, I went to, uh, I spent a semester in, in West Florida as a, an exchange student in 2012 or 2011. And I've made many friends there. That's where I met my wife, too. And, I just keep going back there, you know, and New Orleans is four hours west from that. So, so that's yeah, how I, I've, I've been right. there like four times now. So I yeah. went there, I went to, um, Baton Rouge. Oh yeah. For, uh, yeah. Family for a girlfriend, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'd never got to experience anything authentically Louisiana. It was, uh, yeah. Just, I just got stuck in the campus in LSU. Oh, well, you went to, you, you, did the study abroad thing as well, or no? She was uh, my my ex girlfriend. Uh, studied at LSU. And okay, I was studying up in Canada, and I went down to visit her. And I realized now that was a wasted opportunity because <laughs> it would have been so sick to just go to like cookouts and whatever. Yeah, Baton Rouge. That's that's like two hour drive from New Orleans. I think not that far. Is it? Yeah, it's pretty oh. pretty close. Like you drive through Baton Rouge when you drive from Pensacola to New Orleans. I was young and dumb. I have no idea. Yeah. I didn't pay attention at all. I should have, <laughs> but I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, you know, when this COVID shit's over, you got a good excuse to go stateside, oh, yeah. you know? Go back for sure. I need to go back east. It's been too long. Which parts of the states have you been? What parts of the states? So I grew up uh, near West Virginia. Um in a place called Gary County, Maryland. Okay. It's, um, yeah, pretty rural, pretty humbling place to grow up. It's a, yeah, not much going on there. I had like 2,000 people in my hometown. All we had was a ski mountain, and I lived on the ski mountain. So that was, that was it. Um, and from there, like I didn't get to travel too much, I guess, because it was um, like any time we had time to travel, since my mom is Norwegian, Anytime we had money or time to travel, we would go to Norway and visit her family. Um, so I didn't really travel much around the States. Did a little bit of the East Coast, went to New York when I was a kid, um, went to LA right before I left the States and then went back a few times later with the girlfriend, current girlfriend. Cool. That was cool. What about you? How far or how far have you been in the States? Um I went to, well, first time I ever went there was uh, New York. I went there with my dad when I was 18. It was one of those, you know, like father-son dream kind of things that, uh, you know, that we did. It was really, really cool. Um, and then the time after that, we went with the whole family again a couple of years later. And then I ended up in Pensacola, Florida when I uh, was an exchange student there. And I just traveled around that general area quite a bit. So nice. Went to uh, yeah, New Orleans, uh, Austin, Texas, San Antonio, Texas. Dude, that's the spot. Austin is blowing up right yeah, now. <laughs> it's going to be the next Silicon Valley. Yeah, uh, it I've, already I've is. Yeah. Look at it; it's crazy, man. That, 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 everybody's there already. Yeah, Elon Musk is moving all the stuff there. Yep. Joe Rogan yep. moved there all with the all his comedians. buddies. Oh, dude! All the comedians are there now. Like all of them. <laughs> It's uh, undisputed now. That's the capital of everything entertainment. Funny how quick that went, you know? Like in five years, just everything kind of just went left California, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, well, I mean, California is in... I mean, I don't know. I've never lived there. I don't, like, know too many people who live there. But from what I've heard, L.A. and San Francisco are just, like, falling apart. Yeah. Of course, everything on this side of the ocean sounds like 10 times scarier than what it probably actually is. But I, I hear it's just gotten way out of control. Like the homeless problem is ridiculous. So 
I don't know, keep up just appearances. At least the tax rate is going ridiculously high. There's threats of new tax rates like every other week. It's, it seems scary. It's, it's weird. That was like a land of promise. And yeah, I feel like, I feel like that's changed a lot. Well, when, when all the rich, successful people start leaving, you know, you're doing something wrong, man. Yeah. Right. Uh, but do they like, do, do you think the Californian government or the LA government, like, do, do you think they recognize that? Are they like putting together contingency plans to, to keep all the wealthy people in LA? I don't know, man. Like from, I mean, Elon Musk is leaving. He probably has a good reason. And, um, oh, yeah. you know, a bunch sure he's of, paying phenomenal rates. In Texas. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I believe I believe that. And um, oh, hold on, I gotta turn my screen. My, my screen, <laughs> my screen's turning yellow because the sun's oh, up. No. Here we go. Because the sun's up or sun's down. I mean, yeah. Oh, so it just does that on like at nine o'clock. Yeah, no, it, it's like this this built-in Windows f- feature. I'm sure Apple has it too. If once the sun goes down, your screen. Um, it takes the blue light out, so it's less strenuous for your eyes. Oh, mine hasn't. Uh... You probably got to turn turn that feature <laughs> on, but you yeah. got to be careful not to have it turned on when you're editing photos, because then every all your colors are going to be messed yeah. up when you. <laughs> That's why I just always have stuff like that off, <laughs> like those glasses and stuff too that filter out blue lights. I can't get behind that. I can't yeah. do that. It, it does work though. It it does make your eyes less tired. So. Yeah, whatever. It's supposed to be tired. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, that's the point. That's the point of nighttime. Yeah. Well, supposed enough. to be tired. I did the, the whole I think the main idea is that you're that you don't stay awake when, when you're behind the screen at night, you know. But yeah. then I guess you could say you shouldn't be at a computer at night anyway, so you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> but well, if you it's... work as a creative, you probably can't say that. No. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as as far as California, I don't. I've never been there. I've I don't live there, so I don't know. I don't really know. You know, I don't you have know. to go. Yeah, you have to visit. It's it's iconic to visit. I mean, it's there's something special about driving through uh, L.A. or driving up the PCH or whatever. It, it's it's pretty wild. The I've, coolest thing I've, I've ever seen in California was the giant sequoia trees. I don't know why this stood out to me more than anything else, like the Hollywood sign or whatever. But me and my girlfriend, we drove up from LA to Yosemite. Okay. And in Yosemite, we stopped and saw the the big ass giant sequoia trees. And that like that blew my mind. That that was something I was not expecting. It, it's a crazy experience. Those are big trees. <laughs> yeah, I've seen pictures. They're uh, on it looks very impressive in pictures. It's it's weird, yeah. Because I I mean I've, obviously we've all seen pictures of these like the hole where you can drive a car through and stuff. But when you get next to it, you said, what the fuck? <laughs> That's a building. I could have apartments leveled up in that. It's it's weird. It's the weirdest. That's the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. Sounds really cool. <laughs> I, I would I would go there uh, for nature most of all more than anything. Good. You know, I mean it would be yeah. it would be kind of cool to see Los Angeles, I guess, but. I mean, the nature part of everything there and the surf, you know, that, that's what yes. attracts me to it. But coming from North, because we went to, we made a point to go to Yosemite. Yosemite was something I've always wanted to see. It's crazy. The pictures are insane. I mean, there's so much history in the pictures there and Ansel Adams and his work. Um, it, it's just something I've always wanted to see because the it's known as like the most dramatic landscape in the States. And when we went there, it was the most disappointing touristy thing I've ever done. Really? In my life. It's just phenomenal. I'm, I'm spoiled, right? I live in Norway. I've traveled around Norway. Norway is amazing in that if there's a cool, like natural phenomenon, you're supposed to go see it, but you're supposed to earn that opportunity to go see it. They don't just give it to you. Like Preikestolen, for example, is that they call it pulpit rock. It's that big vertical monolith that hangs off the mountain that has um it was in the the mission impossible movie fallout what, what's it called? um you can probably search pulpit rock pulpit rock yeah norwegian it's called Prekestolen. oh okay um <laughs> and it's it's like yeah i know good luck <laughs> <laughs> oh I've it's seen iconic yeah and it 
like is so you park about uh, two hours of walking away from it and you have to hike to it and it takes work. And then when you get to it, there's no guardrails. They trust that you're not going to jump off the edge. There's no help. The only thing that helps you get there is they've built some stairs out of rocks to get there. That looks and that's amazing. it. Otherwise the hiking paths are like, it's dirt. It's just a man-made path through trees. But when I went to Yosemite in the bottom of the valley, there's a, a two lane road that goes in a loop all the way around the valley. And it's just traffic. Tourists just looking up out their windows, like, oh, wow, <laughs> cool parking on the side of the road. And at the end of that valley, there's like a hotel, there's like a grocery store, just like right there at the base of it, which was the most disappointing thing to me. Like a because theme park. I, I, it's close to it. It's a theme park, but you drive the ride, basically. Huh. And then the, the next... Or not the next day, but we plan on the same day to do a hike. We're like, fine. Okay, we're going to go hike. We're going to go get that iconic view. Um, so we picked this hike called the Four Mile Hike that takes you up to Glacier Point, I think it's called, which is like the iconic view of Half Dome. And it, you can see all kinds of cool shit. And it was paved like the whole way, the hike up the side of the mountain. Somebody had taken asphalt. Well, first of all, it was closed for the season, which is a funny idea that somebody shot a gate and thought we couldn't just step over the gate. <laughs> you're not going to keep me out. It's nature. Come on. You're not going to keep me out. And it was paved. Like somebody paved the whole thing. It's so weird. Why? I, I, I mean, I get why I get, there's so many people walking on it. It's going to degrade it pretty fast over time, but it can't be like, it can't be that much. Come on. Were there also signs like don't, don't step, uh, don't step off the <laughs> path and, and, you know, I'm, I, I don't remember seeing any, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> it was just weird. It was just weird. And like the first time you see the view, you come out, it's the tunnel view is what it's called. It's like the most iconic. That's like the one shot of Ansel Adams that everybody's like, yeah, wow, cool. It's crazy shit in the world. Um, when you come out of that, it's like a parking lot on either side of the road. There's hundreds of like fat ass tourists who aren't bothered to hike any of it. There's like a train that there's like a, a weird like tourist train that drives you around and it parks in that part. It's so busy and messy with kids and shit just running around and screaming. And the argument is that it is making nature accessible to everybody. Right. But my argument is like maybe it shouldn't be. Yeah. Maybe yeah. You should maybe you should have to earn it. And it's I, I've gotten a lot of backlash for that opinion before, but I I don't give a fuck. You should earn it. It should be hard. If it's going to be at all easy, it should stop there at the tunnel view. And then you should park and you should have to walk in to see more. It right. should be hard. It shouldn't be easy. But uh, I don't know. But well, that's not uh, inclusive and politically correct, my friend. <laughs> politically correct? How is this politically related? Well, you can't say anything bad about anybody and, you know, everyone can no, do fat everything. Fat-ass tourists don't deserve to see the best views. <laughs> Is what it is. You should have to earn them. I know you're fat shaming, man. Oh, <laughs> Dude, I've been trying to lose weight this week. I lost uh, two and a half kilos this week. Well, good for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I always get fat during the winter. I go up to 85 kilos or so, and then I try to go back down to 75 during the summer. That's quite a big, uh, big difference, you know? Yeah, it's quite the experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've this gotten fatter too, uh, man. With the fucking day, day shut down the the gyms for like half a year now so brutal it's, i know the feeling you know and, and for for a couple of weeks we and we were pretty pretty serious about it you know we we would go to uh like uh krav maga twice a week and then just hit the gym like oh. three times you know but none of that <laughs> yeah we went we went from that to nothing and you know so yeah that's crazy and have they opened it up at all like oh. in between no 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 um, mon upcoming Monday, we're allowed to to go to Krav Maga again, but only outside, which is great. You know, I'm I'm very happy about it. At but least we you still, have something. Yeah, but we still have to like sort of social distance. So we we practice with these pool noodles instead of actually like trying to hit each other, <laughs> which is kind yeah, of fun, I guess. Yeah, you know, like the the, the big foamy, um, like the it big. Shouldn't be fun. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, fun. but but it's martial arts. Yeah, but you you know. 
you're, you're <laughs> no, you know, it's yeah, of course, but it, at least it's something. Yeah, we're, you know, we're still doing like the push ups and and uh, you know, we're getting drilled at least, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we 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 had that um, for the last year as well, and there was one week where the gyms opened back up for people with rehabilitation needs. Oh. So you had to get a doctor's note. A doctor had to sign off and say like, "You're fucked. You need to go to the gym." <laughs> and uh, everybody started to figure out how to game that system. Right. Everybody had a friend who was a doctor or a chiropractor, <laughs> and they just opened up now with the same rules. So we'll see how it goes. But it was open up for a week, and then they cut it, and they're like, "Oh shit, okay, no, that's not working." So they 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 killed it. But um, it's open back up now for for people with uh, rehabilitation. And I have a prolapse disc in my back, so I qualify. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> I mean, it's not good that your back is fucked up, but it's good that you can no. go to the gym. It's uh... <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. For, it, for me, I think if I could get a doctor to sign off saying that it would help me with my mental stability, that would be an easier argument for me. I'd believe in that more than my back needing help. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. It is. It was tough. It was hard in the winter. Yeah, I mean, working out is very important, in my opinion, and yes. it's important for, yeah, like you said, for your mental state, and it's one of those things, if I don't do anything for a while, it just I just don't feel right, you know, in my head, you know, it, it's just, you gotta, yeah, you gotta move, man. Yes, it's, it, it's indispensable, I guess is the word I'm looking for, it, it, and we... I mean, we have a lot of opportunity to work out outside in Norway. There is um, a huge community for it. There's a guy named Lasse Tufta who's a um, big, like, calisthenics guy. He built a lot of these, like, parks with, like, pull-up bars and stuff and really made that popular. So every neighborhood has at least, like, five of them in Norway. That's great. But um, it's winter in Norway. <laughs> it's minus 15. Yeah, that kind uh, of takes the fun out of it, I guess. It's hard. It was hard. Yeah, we... We did our best, but um, it was hard. Minus 15. That's Yeah. <laughs> we were wearing like Sorel boots, wearing down jackets, and just out there trying to do push-ups and pull-ups, whatever we had. I bought like every rubber band imaginable that I could work out with. But um, you can't replace weight. It's just it's not possible. Well, we, we bought some, some weights and kettlebells too when, when this whole thing started. But, how how uh, did you find them? Well, we... Um, we it was like a week before everything started locking down and i kind of felt it coming because neighboring countries were doing it i was like oh you know let's let's just buy this stuff uh, while we still can and there was a huge line you know and we, Smart man. we managed to get our hands on some uh, some stuff but in the end you know we we live in a in an apartment where we work now we live there we sleep there we do we do everything there and then you're also that's also going to be your workout room now you know so yeah. it's you know it it lasted for a couple of weeks but yeah 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 the the kind of niche or the fun gimmicky stuff wears off and then it becomes a chore yeah i, I like yeah, if it, you go to the gym or go work out that you also just go somewhere to do it you know that that's also kind yeah. of part of it you're out of the house you're in a place where you only do that and i think that that also kind of plays a part of it yeah the the gyms in norway right now are extremely diligent at cleaning everything and everybody who goes to the sorry <laughs> this beer is getting to me but everybody who goes to the gym right now for rehabilitation purposes they know how hard it was to not have the gym so everybody is cleaning every inch of anything they touch after they use it hmm. so right now the gym seems like the only place that i go to in public that does that like, hmm. i don't see people cleaning shit at the grocery store grabbing the avocados to feel if they're ripe and then putting them back. <laughs> yeah. I don't see that shit happening anywhere else, but the gym, it happens and it's diligent. But the, the weird thing is that like the government, at least in Norway and maybe there as well, they don't seem to understand that or see it. They only, they, did you just mute yourself while you sneezed? I did. Yeah. Genius. <laughs> Genius. I never thought. But I'm going to start to play with it now. Are you going to try to be <laughs> semi-professional, you know? Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> if I press then 
It, yeah, okay, that's good to know. <laughs> 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 but it's weird. It's just weird that like the gyms got punished as much as everything else. Like the gym is the one place where everybody cleans everything. Why? Why? Why punish us? I don't know if it's true, but there, Sots is the uh, main line or the main chain of gyms in Norway. They have like hundreds of locations. They claimed before they shut down last summer that they had zero percent infection rate right. at their gym. I mean, once again, if you asked me, I would say I'm part of zero percent of crimes ever of all time. But <laughs> so I don't know how much I trust their opinion. But at the same time, if that's true, like that's a brave claim and zero percent, I, I believe it. Everything's clean. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. There's there's um, and I I'm not sure if if all the rules that are in place necessarily you know make that much sense. Like I'm I'm not a doctor, so I'm not qualified to speak on the subject at all. Yeah. But some things I wonder, like, you know, when I see someone sitting in their car by themselves wearing a mask, I'm like, well, what, what good does that do you? <laughs> you know, it's, it's. I'm not a doctor. What's wrong with you? That's not the point of podcasting. Yeah, I guess. It's supposed to have yeah. brave, unpopular opinions. People <laughs> click it. Come on. I'm not a doctor, but I fully believe in my opinion. <laughs> there you go. My opinion is correct more so than a doctor's. That's what people <laughs> need to hear. <laughs> well, there's plenty of that out there. That's for sure. Yeah, there you go. We could be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I got to be careful, man, because if you um, if you if you piss off the wrong people, you get kicked off YouTube now. Ah, apparently, I heard about that AOC thing. What did she? What she? Did she get kicked off? Uh, I doubt that. No, no, no. AOC wasn't kicked off. Um, I mean, I heard about it through Joe Rogan. So I, a grain of salt. Well, she says but, a lot of nutty shit, but she never gets kicked off of anything. No, she she had an interview where she sort of flopped. Like uh, apparently the interview was just a little weak, um, and somebody went on Twitter and said like that she was pretty weak. That it seemed pretty. I forget the exact words, but something like it, it seemed pretty um, unprepared or something. And was like police were sent to his door. Oh, I read that. Yeah, it, it was was a guy who who. Uh... Yeah, he he said something like, "Yeah, you that interview sucked," and then the cop showed up at his house. That's that's pretty <laughs> scary, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The world should be crazy. Yeah. It's time. We need to just give up and give into it. We're gonna be <laughs> chaotic anyway. Everybody's gonna play for a team anyway. You can't fight bad against back against it. That's no. just the way our generation works. You're red or you're blue. Yeah, I'm red well, today. <laughs> yeah, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's fucking it's team just, tomato. <laughs> team tomato, I'll take that. It's it's strange, man. It, it it's strange that people can feel so threatened by an opinion. Yeah, that they're willing to call the cops because their feelings were hurt. Yeah, yeah, weird to me. It's yeah, and there's there's like double double uh, standards all over the place too. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. I'm sure I have them. I'm sure there's a million things that I've said that. People can be like, yeah, but you also said this. Yeah, yeah, sure thing, but it just seems so much grosser when politicians do it, you know? It's, yeah, it's uh, be, we're because we're supposed to look up to them. Yeah, and because they also have the power, you know? Like, they can yeah. they can sick the cops on people or uh, ruin someone's uh, livelihood and way easier oh, yeah. than the average person. For uh, for example, the prime minister of Norway got in, the, got in some shit recently. Yeah. Uh, Erna Solberg, she... Um, She's the one who's been behind all these restrictions. Like Norway, you can't have more than two people over in your house at once. It's it's gotten like heavy. The restrictions are insane. Yeah, she was caught having like here. Yeah. she was up at a cabin and she was caught having like thirteen people over for dinner. <laughs> Somebody posted a picture from the dinner. Yeah, and she paid a, a two thousand euro fine for it. Like, yeah. how, how am I supposed to trust you after that? I think the same thing insane. happened with the uh, mayor of uh, California. I think. Yeah, Gavin Newsom did it. Yeah. Yeah, but like people went after Gavin Newsom. And right after, so. after that. Fuck because the, the whole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Um, I'm not from California. I'm not allowed to have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, you got to hold them accountable. It's, it's true. I mean, we, there are elected officials we, we chose. And it's, it's strange that. I think there's a lot of 
backlash for her now, but I in, in America it'd be like fire Erna Solberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she needs to go kind of shit. Well, last year that, there was also a pretty high up minister that was also part of the party that decided the whole lockdown rules and everything and, and he had a wedding with a bunch of people, you know. And it was like a week after after they locked everything down and told people they couldn't, you know, go to funerals with, with a bunch of people and then go see their dying grandparents and shit. Insane. It's insane. Like how how do you like where do you get the balls to to do that? You know, that's what doesn't it, it kind of doesn't it kind of feel like they were bullied when they were younger and now's their chance to sort of create the rules? Like yeah. somebody else set the rules for them when they were a kid. Now they're like, yeah, finally, you're not allowed to see any of your cool friends. And I'm just going to go have a party by myself. <laughs> yeah. If people want to hang out with me because I'm cool now. <laughs> it's not a weird thought, man. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, either way, it's um, it's not good. We, we got to hold them accountable. But uh, I feel like no place does that better than America. Yeah. You're more of that. What's that? Europe needs more of that. Europe needs to hold their leaders more accountable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I also hope that Europe doesn't get the same uh, extreme divisiveness uh, that the U.S. Yeah. has right now because it yep. seems that like the countries just split in two and both have seemed to just hate each other and don't even want to talk to each other anymore, you know? I you have to hold them accountable bad. as a person and not as a party. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and look at people as individuals and not as part of yes. their group identity, you know? Yeah, but the, the problem is that people will happily volunteer for that group identity. Like, you can say whatever you want about, like, if you criticize anything about Joe Biden. Like, yeah. Joe Biden is 100% on board with the idea of him being a liberal, of yeah. him being a Democrat. And he kind of put that on himself. So if you criticize him for these Democratic ideals, like... Are, are you not just following his example? Is but then again, you can't really have a politician who excels being an independent. Like that it's not possible in America. No. So it's a chicken or the egg. Like, should the people change their minds or should the politicians change their minds? Which, which one's gonna come first? I don't yeah. know. That's a good question. It's yeah. a hard place. America trapped itself. There's nothing they can do. I mean, it's like in an ideal world, people would stop criticizing each other for what parties they believe the other person is going to be related to. But that's going to be harder than having a politician who just stands out and says, you know what, I'm an independent. Well, they've, they've, there's been politicians in the past that ran this independent, but it always it never works out. You know, they, they always won. end up <laughs> no, they always end up taking a bunch of votes from one party. Yeah. And then, then, then that party blames their loss on the independent. So no one wants to run this. But that's my point. Like name, name one. Yeah. Oh, there's, you there's can't. No. It's it's hard. It's because you don't remember who they are. You have no idea. They gained no traction because they didn't claim a flag. Right. You gotta put your. You gotta put a color to your name. It's it's the only way. That it just keeps getting worse. Well, I could I I couldn't make the argument that uh, Trump was the most independent president that. Uh, I've seen in my lifetime, you know, I mean, I don't know what the fuck he was. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> was a mistake, half, half a mistake his own party. party hated the shit out of him too. So I yeah. Mean, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> and I don't know. Half of America liked him enough to vote him into the white house. Yeah. Well, I liked how he just was... kind of didn't give a fuck, man. I enjoyed, I enjoyed how uh, his kind of attitude, like, uh, I don't care, man, I'm here. I yeah, <laughs> I, think there was a lot of, <laughs> I think there was a lot of wishful thinking in that his I don't give a fuck attitude would translate into Republican politics, but instead it translated into these selfish acts that he just like went ballistic with. Yeah, that's I, I, if it was more traditional politics and more traditional decision making, I think that I don't give a fuck attitude would have been dope. I love it. I think it's rad. I think the political correctness needs to go. I think it's dangerous. I fully support him in that sense. But at the same time, like your ideas have to work. <laughs> they can't just be unfounded. They can't just be radical. They can't just be reactionary. They, they, they have to work. And I think that's where he fell through. Yeah. Well, and the whole COVID thing didn't help much uh, either. No, <laughs> no, no. 
I think if no, if, if that wouldn't have happened, he would uh, he would still be there. I believe that. You think so? I think so. Yeah. He, you he, think a lot of Republicans lost yeah. respect for him because of COVID and the way he dealt with it? No, you know, like those those press conferences toward the end that there was just one big mess, and he was, you know, that he handled that poorly. I think, in in terms of yeah, you know, also PR got away from him. Yeah. Yeah. It got away from all of us. I mean, it's, it got it, away it's from everybody. Hard yeah. to hold, it's hard to hold one man accountable for that because it was impossible to deal with. But one at the thing, same I, time, one thing who else did, is going to deal with it? That's true. Yeah. But one thing I did find funny is when at the very beginning, when he closed the borders to China, everyone called him a racist. And then a couple months <laughs> later, they criticized him for not doing it sooner. The same people who called him a racist, you know. Yeah. It, the, it, it's just that was a bit unfortunate. Yeah. It's months later there was a reason. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's it's just I don't know. If there's one thing he really did was just kinda show what a bunch of hypocrites run the government there and how how just shitty the media is too, you know. It's Yes. Yeah. On all sides. Yeah, that that's yeah, the media is a whole different conversation. Fuck man, how why where how how do we come to talk about all this? shit man <laughs> american it's natural yeah <laughs> it happens went pretty hard from alligator meat to republicans yeah Actually, that's not a big jump <laughs> no no not really i mean the deep south is pretty pretty red you know there you go there you go so what's going on in your life man what's happening with you well i'm actually making uh i'm actually taking quite a bit of photos lately so that's good yes yes i'm happy to hear that yeah, I'm um, working together with uh, with my cousin, who's part of an art collective, and I've I've been taking pictures for them for quite some time. But now they want to <clears throat> excuse me. Now they want to put like digitize their paintings and put them on their uh, website so people can find them better, so they can sell them through their website as well. So that's been fun, man. That's cool. I've been uh, on the road with them, and and um, you know they kind of they're. They really live like rock stars, those guys, man. It's, uh, it's a wild scene. It's <laughs> yeah, yes, rad. So it, it's just kind of cool to to jump on board that uh, wild ship. Are you shooting like lifestyle, like behind the scenes and stuff as well, or are you just shooting like to document the paintings? Well, I, I take pictures. Uh, let's see, I can share my screen with you. I um, I shoot pictures of their paintings but i also do like behind the scenes stuff and uh but uh cool. and i go with them on the road to go to people's houses and, and take pictures of the paintings in those houses cool. so that's uh it's a lot of fun man oh that sounds fun living the life man it's nothing but the open road and uh late night beers <laughs> hell yeah I don't, I, I don't know i've never lived that rock stuff I, I don't mean, know anything about it. I mean, the 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 beers and the gin tonics that 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 shit starts around uh, lunch over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Yeah. Let's see. These are important lifestyle choices. Yeah, they uh, they got one gear, man, and that's the sixth one. There you go. There you go. Slow <laughs> to start, but when you get there, man, you're moving. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I'll, I'll share my screen with you. This is something, that kind of lifestyle is something I grew out of too fast, I think. Well, I kind of grew oh, yeah. out of it. Here we go. This this is their um, this is their artwork. So yeah, are these your photos? Uh, yeah. Shit, these are so clean and Thanks, true man. to what I assume the colors and. I got this. Was. I got this little color uh, um, card that I also take pictures of, so I can get the colors really right. Uh, and there's like zero distortion. These are so clean. Thanks, man. What are you shooting this on? Uh, the 85 millimeter 1.8 with the A7R3. Yes, this, this is my favorite. Good call. That's a sick, sick picture. And I also used the the, the the pixel shift feature for that. Yeah. So, so you get like okay. You're like the only person I know who uses that. Well, I finally found an excuse to to use it. I guess. But it uh, it works, man. It it you get like two hundred and fifty megapixel pictures or whatever it does. Yeah, like one hundred and twenty megapixels. Jesus, that's yeah. too many. Those files are are a bitch to work with. 
<laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. And these are, you know, I take these pictures like behind the scenes, you know. I got some cool. These are you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, these guys are cool. I got some pro photo um, wireless flashes for these. So, you yeah, know, what did you get? Which which pro photos? Uh, I think the this is with the 1635. Uh, yeah. I used the B10, I think. Yeah, cool. It's a good line. That's what I'm using uh, as well for my flash. Yeah, it's... it's uh... <laughs> These yeah, are man. monster photos. These are sick. Thanks, dude. But yeah, they're I, they're good subjects to work on, man. These guys are crazy. Yeah, if if you ever visit the city, you should uh, come by, man. You'll uh, dude wasn't uh, even looking. He's just painting <laughs> with anything. Look at him go. <laughs> what a vibe. Cool shit. This is cool. I like how quirky and fun. Very like. Um, Salvador Dali kind of vibes from the pictures, at least. Yeah. Who's Who's the photographer who did the portrait of him? That's me, man. No, no, no. <laughs> I know these are you, but who's the photographer who did the portrait of Salvador Dali? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I like the famous one with the mustache, because these look very similar to that kind of style. Is it? I had no idea. Sick. This one. But yeah. You, you see that like soft black and white. So he's he's the artist, but somebody took a portrait of him with a mustache that's like iconic. Yeah, that one. And I'm getting that vibe. Is it this guy? Omer Ter Tarosh. All right. You're the new Omer Tarosh. Oh wow. I wish. There you go. Take that. Take that and run with it. Sweet. <laughs> Put that is, on the box art. It is kind of like a like a yeah, I can see why you would think of that. I had no, um, well, I didn't use that as inspiration, but I can see why you would, uh, you know. Yeah, black and white, slightly surreal, like this goofy was, lighting. I'm into it. Like this one was also cool. They were sitting in front of the painting. Yeah. So, you know. Badass. The throne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, this, these guys are sick. These guys are too cool. Yeah, man, you got to follow them on the Instagram too. It's, uh, it's yeah, kind of funny. What's their name? Uh, let's see, I, I can, I'll, I'll link it to you. Um, Sweet. Uh, You're not going to plug them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the triple A fresh one, two, three. That's uh hope name. <laughs> yeah. That's like uh, auto generate cool guy name. Triple <laughs> yeah, A fresh one, two, three. They, 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 they're called Triple A Fresh, but their gallery number is like one two three one hundred twenty three. So they just oh. add one two three. <laughs> just sick. Triple <laughs> A Fresh. Yeah. All right. This is um, Roderick Vasse, yeah. Michael Kleyon, and uh, Hans Kleyon, and they uh, they collaborate oh. on paintings too. So you know. Dope. Yeah, it's cool shit, man. If you uh, if if you ever visit my town, I'll. Um, I'll definitely uh, we'll go there man let's do it let's I'm do it i'm all about it once like we're that. allowed to go anywhere yeah i gotta visit uh norway too but we should uh, yeah. you know yeah there's uh too much to see here yeah i like it man it's it's very colorful it's uh dramatic yeah and and then they're all like huge canvases too so that's uh that's kind of cool too. It, it's all it's all like really big, you know. Sick. Very uh, very trippy. Yeah, sick. Like two and a half by two and a half meters, you know this one. So it's big. I love when art sort of acts as like a window into their minds. It's a scary it's place. Like <laughs> yeah, when it's a mess and you're kind of intimidated when you look at it. I'm a big fan of that, but you know it makes sense to the artist, but for you it takes like two days to figure out. Yeah, and you know, sometimes they uh, they also say like it doesn't make sense to them what they do, but it's still, you know, it just feels right. Yeah, this is sick, dude. This is wild. That's a brave move uh, reinterpreting the Last Supper. It is, yeah. <laughs> and then that's a very brave move and a crazy interpretation too. Yeah. Are most of your listeners audio only? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this, so this is terrible podcast. <laughs> We're looking at a bunch of colors and shapes, and I promise you they're pretty rad. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go to go to triple A fresh one two three dot com. Yeah. So you'll see them. Yeah, I should probably probably edit it out in the audio only version. But uh, no, no, no. But yeah, go <laughs> go go to their website. It's cool. So I'll describe see. it. There's three faces. I assume they're women. Well, they got it's, big titties. Uh, so. Yep, <laughs> that was the dead giveaway. <laughs> one has a cup. <laughs> it's pretty rad. It's crazy. I'm into it. They have like cat ears, or one of them does. Uh, one thing's re- what's really cool about their artwork, I think, is that the eyes are always really intense, and it's, it's pretty small, you know, on the screen. But if you yeah. look at the paintings, like those eyes, really, um, it, it's, you know, it, it's very colorful, but it's also it's also kind of there's also some a little bit of sadness in there, usually. Yeah. So it's um, dope. It's cool, man. It's cool. I'm a fan, and it's it's a lot of fun to uh, to be on the road with them too. So. Do you do you think you uh, you appreciate arts as much as it needs to be appreciated? Uh, I try to. I, I'd like to l- learn more about it, but every time I'm I'm going to, uh, I think yeah, it was right before the lockdown. We went to the Rijksmuseum, which is where the Dutch masters all are. You know, the Night Watch and Rembrandt and all that stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, I went there as a kid, but. I definitely have a different kind of appreciation for it now as yeah. I get older, you know, same with history. I'm suddenly really interested in history lately too. So Lately? What happened? What changed? I don't know, man. Last couple of years, I just kind of, because everything's so crazy right now, makes, makes me kind of wonder what happened before all this. And <laughs> <laughs> When was the world ever normal? Yeah, well, I think um, one thing I do find, one thing I do believe is that we grew up, we experienced some of the, surely some of the best uh, quality of life uh, people yeah. ever had, ever, you know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, if I, even if I talk to my uh, grandmother or my parents even, and they, you know, when they talk about what it was like when they grew up, like the amount of prosperity and the amount of money the average person has and all this technology that we have now, you know? Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, they, they didn't have any of that. So it's crazy, man. It's uh, and our kids are going to see something completely different. Yeah, it's something wild that we can't even imagine. And I'm pretty pumped. I'm stoked. As long as I'm smart, this is the thing. As long as I'm smarter than my kids about it, because it, I imagine to be a parent now, it must be a little bit frustrating not understanding like social media, like what is TikTok. What was like the backpack kid dance? I, I think it might backpack be a little kid bit, dance, dude. That yeah, the backpack kid dance. The thing was iconic. And if I, you're a parent, I, you saw your kid doing that, you'd be like, "Are you okay?" Like, what's, oh, is that when they on? put the put the arms like? Uh, is that like the, the yeah the straight arms? Thing? The, yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. It, it was Fortnite stole it, and actually the backpack kids uh, sued them for stealing. Really, it. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, that. it's one of the dumbest lawsuits. They also stole the Carlton dance from uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and uh, Alfonso Ribeiro, the the guy who plays Carlton, sued them as well. <laughs> <laughs> did he get? Did he get money? Yeah. yeah. He I don't know. I don't remember how that went, but uh, at least he tried. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but yeah. If you're if you're a parent, imagine seeing that. You'd be like, "What in the fuck is going on?" But that's what I what think now, dance? man. It's. I never want to think that. I want to be ahead of my kid. I want my kid to be like, hey, look at this. Like this dance, you wouldn't get it, dad. This is the this is the cool guy dance. And I fucking nail it like right in front of my kid and be like, I've been on that for a year. (laughs) Where the fuck have you been, man? Catch up. (laughs) Just want to be cooler than my kid always. Well, the first time where I kind of understood my parents struggling with programmed VCR and where I could figure it out right away and they just were mind blown that I could program the VCR and they didn't get it. I've, I've <laughs> for the first time understood the way they felt when I booted up Minecraft. I just don't get yeah. it, man. I don't get it. Yep. That's the first, yep. that's the first time I had the feeling like I, I just don't understand this. I don't get it. <laughs> oh, I never want that to happen to me. Never. I want to be ahead. Always. Pretty Having said that, I don't have to feel it. Huh? It's a, it was a pretty humbling, shitty feeling. Yeah, I can imagine. You ever play Minecraft? Yeah, dude, of course. Like I said, I'll always want to be ahead. 
<laughs> I always want to be ahead. Like, what if what if I accidentally had a kid when I was not playing Minecraft and the kid suddenly knew Minecraft? Then what? Nah, the kid will never be ahead of me in anything. All right. I will always be able to kick my kid's ass in anything. Oh, you'll be able Video to kick, kick his ass at least until he's like 15 or something, you know? No, every, no always. <laughs> always. Until the day I go out. I better not lose it anything to my kid. That is rule number one. Rule number one is I win. <laughs> <laughs> this I firmly believe. Firmly believe. Fuck yeah. Yep. Physically, but, video games. Well, it's going to be easy the first couple of years, but eventually, you know, they're going to oh, yeah. catch you. Yeah, yeah. I need another training partner for the first couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But how about you, Ben? Have you been... Uh... You've been taking photos. I saw some pretty cool ones. Yeah, plenty. I've been trying to shoot a lot more cars. Uh, like I explained in the last podcast, I just need to like reset myself and figure out what it is that I love shooting and focus on that pretty much in particular. Um, and that was cars. So I, I've been focusing a lot on cars. Um, and that's been going really well. It's been quite the adventure. Uh, tomorrow I'm shooting a Lamborghini. Sweet. Um, yeah, Huracan Performante. I've shot it before, but I have a pretty cool idea for something new if I can figure it out. What are you um, gonna do? I have a bunch of like uh, one plus meter long LED tubes that change colors. Um, so I'll be using those and playing around with that uh, in, in like a cool industrial kind of vibe. Cool. We'll see. Yeah, fingers crossed. It's uh, getting really light out. Like, we don't have any indoor places that I know of that would work. And it's staying light out pretty late now in Norway. We've passed, like, on the 21st of March, you have the spring equinox. Oh, right. And um, we've passed that. So now the days are really long. So it's going to be hard to find a place dark enough. Um, but we'll see. And other than that, like, I've been trying to film it as well. So I, I've started YouTubing a lot more, right. a lot more. I'm doing three videos a week now. One main video every Sunday that's like 10 minutes and edited and filmed with a, another photographer who kills it. His name is Mats Anderson. He's been absolutely nailing it. And then I do on um, Mondays, the day after that comes out, I edit on live stream the videos. And then on Thursday, I have a podcast that comes out every day. Cool. It Thursday. comes out every day, every Thursday. Thursday. Okay, cool. Yeah, so today was, uh, I had a podcast just released with a car photographer named Evan Malum. He's a Norwegian car photographer, plays with light a lot, super fun guy. Cool. He was cool. He was cool. It was a good time. We, we talked about cars. <laughs> cars and photography. So that's, that's, been, uh, that's been it for me. So it's, it's interesting, like I get it now from your perspective. Hosting a podcast is, uh, is a lot harder than being on it. <laughs> well, you gotta, <laughs> the, the difficult thing is that you got to keep the conversation going, I, I find sometimes. Yes. It's, yes. Sometimes it's, you're, you're responsible for keeping it going and keeping it interesting. It's hard when it comes to an abrupt stop at a place you didn't plan. Yeah. Like if, exactly. if it wasn't in your notes beforehand and they stop talking, you just like, how do I segue over to what I want to talk about? That's, that's difficult for me. Right. Well, one thing, uh, one on. thing I would like to do is, is do something with like a co-host so you can kind of bounce off each other. I mean, I really enjoy these one-on-one -on -one interviews, but one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to is the um, Adam and Dr. Drew show, Adam Carolla and, and Dr. Drew. Yeah, and uh, you know it's like like half uh, half an hour every day, and I think they they record it in one long recording, and then they just chop it up and they just talk a bunch oh. of shit. People call in with questions, so and, they uh, only need to record like once a month, basically. Yeah, they they I think they record on on like Thursday or something, and then they they just do, re yeah, the whole week smart. in one uh, one go. Smart, so smart. Yeah. God, yeah, I need to get on that. I should do like two hour long podcasts and chop them up and then use them over two weeks. Well, one thing I've I've did with my last one that I did, which was a very elaborate one, this um, was a bitch to edit, but I'm very happy with the end result. Was um, I'm doing this collaboration with this guy called uh, 
Dinosaur Dave, and he runs. That's a cool uh, name. It is, man. Cool it name. Is. He's a cool guy too, man. He runs a Dinosaur Rock Guitar, which is this um, alchemy, this uh, this guitar um, en- encyclopedia, basically of the most badass rock guitar players. Sick. And yeah, man. And he wrote these really good profiles on on the most legendary uh, guitar players. And now we're doing podcasts on those profiles. Sick. I want to hear that. I got to get into that. Yeah, but one, one thing I did was kind of interesting is that was like um, we did the first one we did was on Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple and uh, Rainbow. And it was like two hours long. But I cut like little clips of it, too, that I also put up with like a catchy clickbaity title. And those Why things move? get a lot of uh, views, too, because people are not quickly to click on like a two hour video, you know, Smart move. so God, can do that. get more out of your content by just cutting it up and also putting it up there and then uh, yeah. follow the link down below to see the full episode. And I need a, I need to get like a team to start doing this shit for me. Yeah, I have the filmer. Mott's my filmer. It changes a lot. Like it's super nice to be able to not have to hold the camera yourself and somebody who actually cares about the editing. Which uh, which let's see I'm gonna I'm gonna look with you at your at your YouTube. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see which one uh, did did your. Um... So the last three video I started posting this week. Like this week is the first time I've been doing it consistently. So the Sony A1 video with oh, you uh, got the A1. Yeah, I got to try it. I've ordered mine. Oh. I, I tried it for that weekend, and I had a Porsche Cayman at the same time, and we um. Oh my god. We we just shot it with the A1 and showed how much fun it was to shoot it. It was red. That car was fun. <laughs> there you I love that car. That but it was um fun. yeah, it was it was red. That the A1 is a monster of a camera. It is way beyond its time. Like far beyond its time. So it, it was super fun to play with and um I immediately ordered one right after I filmed the video. It does everything it does is just ridiculous. It's, uh, it's good at everything. Yeah. That, that's the weird part. Like, that Sony's really good at making a camera that's good at taking stills in the A7R. And then the A7S is like really sensitive. It's good at filming because of that. And then the A7 is good at just like being kind of a, like a do all tool that you just have in your backpack. But it always sacrifices something. I don't, there's always something missing from the standard A7. I don't know what it is. From the A1, it, it's flawless at everything. Like it films at 8K for some reason. That's insane. Films 120 frames at 4K, 50 megapixel stills. It shoots stills at 30 frames a second. That's just ridiculous. I'm gonna watch this video after. Uh, after. We yeah, do it, man. Is. It's fun. It's become my new addiction. We um like we're gonna film one tomorrow. We have uh, like four more that we've already filmed that are coming out over the next few weeks. Uh, it, it's been fun. They're just like 10 minutes each and we just film cool shit. <laughs> How does the photo quality compare to the um, A7R 3 that you already have? It's pretty similar. I mean, if you have enough lights, any of the cameras with over 40 megapixels are going to be very similar. Um, but you just get a little bit of extra information to play with. In terms of quality, I felt like the raw files were still pretty recognizable, um, pretty similar, but you just get a bit more to play with. Cool, more more pixels and also more um, more uh, fuck. What is it called? Dynamic range. Dynamic range. Yeah, that, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if the dynamic range has changed much at all. I think. I mean, it's already it's, crazy, so. Yeah, it, exactly. I, I don't know how much uh, they can change it, to be honest. I'm I'm not so good at the technology talk. <laughs> These are some sweet shots, though, that are coming Thanks, by. man. Yeah, thank you. And if you guys want to see them at home, you can go to youtube.com slash Kyle Meyer. <laughs> join his channel and subscribe to his channel and give him a like. And smash then, that uh, bell or whatever they say. <laughs> yeah, hit the like button. Smash that bell, motherfucker. Yeah. Yep. I got to start saying that stuff. That's part of my um, vocabulary. <laughs> Smashing bells and 
clicking likes. Yeah. It's it, it's fun. It's a fun process, and I think YouTube is the most fun social media of anything out there. You can tell more stories. You have more freedom. I, I think it's a blast. I don't know if I'm getting rewarded as much as I deserve to be, or maybe I'm getting rewarded too much. Like I have no idea how the numbers are supposed to balance out, views versus subscribers or whatever. I'll figure right. that out, I guess. Well, you got to um, just keep putting stuff up there, you know. I'll just keep going. Yeah. That's uh, three times a week, Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. It's a pretty good schedule, man. I'm I'm still just kind of random. I uh put, when whenever I got something, I put it on there. And uh yeah. my most watched video is a video I took when I was in the subway in South Korea and they have like funny music when you pull into a station and <laughs> depending on whether you head towards the central station or away from it you get a different music and if you're in a train station that where you can transfer to another train that has its own music again so oh, this I, is dope. yeah i thought it was so funny and, and it's kind of a cool cool little tune like that so I, I took a little picture a little video of that you know and uh, yeah. that that got like 120,000 views at this point holy shit yeah big yeah, it is, and it has nothing to do with videos I put up there that I put way more time into. Yeah, but, or yeah. you know, you gotta, you, gotta, you know, and, and and you can also see like which video causes to subscribe to your channel, and that one is like still way up there. So I got a whole bunch of Koreans subscribing to my channel because you know they like the subway <laughs> video. <laughs> <laughs> That's rad. So it's you know it's it's cool. It's interesting. You know, it's it's a unique kind of. Kind of strange medium. platform. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the best though. It's fun because it's new. It's fun because it's new to me. Yeah. And like I've been doing streams on YouTube for quite a long time now, but it's like the short form content is is fun. Do you get a? Do you interact with people when you do a stream? Like, do you? Uh... Yeah, I have a chat and I talk with people. That's the whole point of the stream. It's just an opportunity for me to chat with other people while mm -hmm. I'm editing. So I, I just sit and edit photos and play music and people can come hang out and chat with me and chat with other people in the chat. And we talk about like editing styles. We talk about everything. Like, how was your day? What are you cooking? A big part of my chat is like, what are people cooking? <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, it's just people challenging each other to cook better burgers and stuff. It's, it's, it's a fun place to be. <laughs> <laughs> the hard thing about the stream is that like, you have to be there and um I was never consistent enough to sort of make that happen. But now Mondays at seven o'clock, that's when I stream. That's when people know to show up. So hopefully it'll get uh, better. Cool. Well, well, I'll, I'll tune in uh, Monday. But, uh, I don't think you've got anything to do uh, around that time on that day. Go. So, so I'll, uh, yeah. Pencil it in yeah. every Monday from here until forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm meeting myself. Do you know um, a guy named uh, Scotty Kilmer? No, he's got like one of the biggest um, car YouTube channels, and he what he does, he just sits at his computer, and he has I think he's got like uh, like five million subscribers or something, and um, he's just you know middle aged guy, crazy guy from Texas who just uh, Rev up. yeah that's him <laughs> rev your engine I'm gonna get you claimed <laughs> and he he just answers questions on a live stream and then he cuts those videos up and puts them on put them on this channel as videos and those get like a, like a million views, half a million views. And he does it every day. It looks crazy. Yeah. But it's, it's it fun. Looks insane. Even if you don't really, you know, if you, if you're not like a super mechanical car person, it's a lot of fun to, to listen to him. You know, you, you learn stuff and he, yeah, he hates like, he's got like uh, it's so weird. He doesn't seem like he should be this popular on YouTube. Oh, he, from his thumbnail, his thumbnails and his titles are just like super my clickbait. New house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> three, three SUVs that will last four hundred thousand miles or more. I, I'm pretty sure all of them will if you drive them right. No, he's, he's got these super clickbaity titles that are really funny, and he, you know, he's got like sort of uh, when he's he makes these jokes and then he laughs at them themselves and then he puts like a funny picture of an of like a dog laughing while he's laughing you know it's uh <laughs> he seems like an old guy trying to figure out youtube yeah but he's he's doing better than most of all of us you know 
The end of the Scotty Kilmer channel. Yeah, he does like very <laughs> dramatic titles, you know. Like, uh, Those are my favorite, like My New House. <laughs> 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 okay, Grandpa. <laughs> Thanks. This is who I hope to be, man. This is what I want. <laughs> I want this to happen in my life. I finally got a Tesla, and here's what I really think about it. Uh, I want to hear his thoughts. He got a Model 3. Just like me, I too have a Model 3. Would you recommend so, Oh, yeah, that changed. That changed since we talked. I got a couple new cars. I, th- I think I remember you You ordered, uh, was it the Volvo, the Pole? Yeah, I ordered, yeah. I ordered a Polestar, and I ended up canceling it because I test drove the Model 3 Performance, and it was just way better. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's way faster. And it comes with track mode. And like track mode was the sole reason why I bought the Tesla Model 3. I canceled the Polestar 2 order and got the Model 3 performance because track mode enables you to put all the power to the back, turn off all the traction control. You can like do whatever you want to the car. You can change the car entirely in track mode. It's it's so much fun in terms of like the drivetrain at least. That's cool. And uh, so all winter I've been sideways. <laughs> <laughs> You can't do that in the Polestar. Polestar is 50-50 power distribution no matter what. It's um, it's more like a cruiser, I think. It's more sensible, right? The Polestar 2 is a great car if you want a first electric car. If you want to be convinced that electric cars are the shit and that they're cool, you get a Polestar 2 because it's a, it's a Volvo. It's got all the reliability of a Volvo. It's got a lot of the same shapes, a lot of the same interior. It just feels like a Volvo. And a Volvo in itself is like an iconic first car. Right. If you were like a kid in way back in the day, you would get a Volvo 240 because your parents knew you would be safe in that. Right. And it's the same thing now. So the Polestar kind of feels like that's in transit to becoming electric. So it still has like the transmission tunnel and stuff like that running all the way through the car. It feels very recognizable, but I can get sideways in the Tesla Model 3. (laughs) (laughs) It's like 490 horsepower, they say, or something. And you can put all that to the rear wheels. And why wouldn't you want that? Ridiculous amount of torque, too. Yeah, 500 torques or something. 500 newton meters. Yeah, that's like... I got that, and then I got... it's all. It was also cheaper. Like, it was um, 0.25% interest on the loan. Okay. And that's, like, nothing. I paid... Wow. I paid like a hundred euros down payment. Like that was it up front. And uh, since then I've been paying, I think it's like 480 euros per month. And like, that's it. The No fuel costs or anything. It's, it's phenomenal. And because nice. I did miss, I missed real cars. So I ended up buying a Defender as well. So I have Hell a Land yeah. Rover Defender now. Yeah. Hell yeah. It you need did- that in your life. Yeah, did you get like the 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 modern one or the? No, fuck no. <laughs> okay, good. No way, I want my fingernails dirty. Good. I got a um, I got a 2005 TD5 uh 110. Oh yes. Um, and it was in really good condition when I bought it, and I ended up just sort of uh, updating the exterior. I put a lot of um parts that I think are cool. I blacked out everything. I murdered it out. I got new wheels. I put new winter tires on it. New summer tires are coming. New summer rims are coming. I'll have sawtooth rims for those who are interested. <laughs> and uh, we have Goodrich ATs. This is all getting nerdy now. Sawtooth rims? Yep. There you go. Pretty so cool, like, huh? Let's see. Let's look that up. Sawtooth. They're, they're like classic Defender. If you want like a pretty boy Defender that doesn't look like it actually goes off-road, that's what you get. Okay. They're cool. Is it like the drug dealer wheels or? I hope they, not. Are they, are they like <laughs> enormous or? Oh, okay. no, they're 16 inch. 16. Oh, okay. So they're, they're useful. Okay. So my tires will be balloons. They'll be fat. They'll be big boy tires. Oh, no, those are cool. I approve. There you go. Yeah. Those are cool. So, uh, yeah. It started off stock and now it's um, not too far from it, but far enough that I'm happy with it. Pretty proud of it. They're so much fun when you... Uh, Go off road with the uh, with them, man. Oh, dude, it's unstoppable. Yeah, you also it's got the snorkel on it for the. No, I want it to be clean. I want it to be sharp, <laughs> just like clean. Only what needs to happen, and that's it. 
So you're not driving it through a river then? I will eventually, but uh, not that deep. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not that deep. The idea is to make it sellable because um, I want to. I, I want to turn it around for some money. Right. That's the goal. Are you? Uh, so we'll see. That's a perfect car to to go on an adventure in the mountains with too, man. Because it'll. Uh, oh yeah. You got the winch with it too, or? Uh... No, no, dude. Clean urban. <laughs> I did get it. I got a new bumper that has um, lights in it, though. It's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you go. So now the running lights extend not only... I put, like, new LED running lights and headlights in it. Um, so now it's safe. <laughs> you can actually see when you're driving. <laughs> but it's just those kind of upgrades. Like, I just wanted to make it safe. I got new winter tires that actually work. Um, stuff like that. Well, it's pretty safe since you're not... Since you won't be going that fast, you know? Yeah. yeah, it maxes out it. If you're going 110 in that car, it feels like the whole thing's going to fall apart. <laughs> yeah. It's scary. It's a scary experience. But it, she drives well under 110, and it feels feels great. Well, you got that the, engine will last forever. You got the both uh, extremes of both, you know. You got, like, the mechanical, big, heavy diesel off-road. There you go. And the, the you know Tesla. something interesting, though? The footprint on my Tesla Model 3 is bigger than the Defender. Really? Like the Defender is a big car. It's got a lot of space, but my Tesla's wider and longer. Interesting. How crazy. How crazy is that? Huh. It's not as big as you think it is, the Defender, but it has a lot of room. It's very efficient. It's just a box. It's a box, yeah. It's square. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you're tall. You're very high up. It's two <laughs> meters tall, the car, 2.1 or something. Yeah, but the roof rack where you can put the, you know, your tent in and shit when you go. Should, you know. but clean. Clean. <laughs> I took everything off. Clean. I want it to be clean. <laughs> Nothing that doesn't need to be on there. It's got to have a purpose. I bet it looks great, man. <laughs> when, when are we going to see some pictures of that car? Yeah, good question. I can send you... I can see if I can send you one on uh, Instagram now. I you should got, have one. You got to use that uh, A1 to take some sweet pictures of that thing, man. Yeah, there you go. One day I'll get the A1. They'll actually send it to me. <laughs> uh, I didn't order it that long ago, so we'll see. Is it like uh, hard to get or a lot of people? There you go. I just sent one to you on Instagram. It's not that hard to get. And I get it through Sony as an ambassador. So I'm not paying as much as you should be paying because it's a very expensive camera. Oh, there it is. Wow. Oh, that's, that's a cool looking car, man. All black. Yes. That's the way it should be. Murdered out. I was going to put a white roof on it and white rims as well to make it look like it was wearing a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you but, even took uh, the grill off. Yeah, we swapped the grill out for a um, a Zunsport grill, which is a little bit more sporty, in my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna show you it in its current uh, parking spot. Cool. Next to its uh, long lost brother. Pretty cool. Wow, that's <laughs> a Ferrari, cool. eh? Yeah, Ferrari four five eight Italia. That's beautiful. Parked right next to my same spec. All black, everything parked right next to my Defender. Pretty cool. I pretend they're mine. I pretend they're both mine. <laughs> <laughs> I got a pretty but, pretty cool car collection there, man. Yeah, I wish that Ferrari was mine. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. That's the last great naturally aspirated V8 Ferrari. They've gone downhill since. Yeah, I st I'm still of the belief that uh, Ferrari should be red. And that they should have a 12-cylinder engine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, back well, in the day. Although yes. that 458 is gorgeous. I mean, I wouldn't mind having that in my driveway either. Oh, it's a legendary car, and it will be forever. It's the last naturally aspirated V8 Ferrari. For now, they'll be turbocharged. And even like the SF90 Stradale, it's not a V12, is it? Or is it? SF90 Stradale, it can't be a V12, can it? A hybrid V12? That I mean, doesn't exist. Why not? I mean, it wasn't the, the what was the for supercar Ferrari that was the hybrid? Was that a V8 also? I think it's a V8. Yeah, the La Ferrari. Was the La Ferrari a V8 as well? Why do I not know this? I know nothing about Ferrari. La Ferrari engine. <laughs> <laughs> I just Googled the same thing. No, it's a V12. La Ferrari was a V12, a hybrid V12. The last the Ferrari. SF90 is, the SF90 is a hybrid V8. It's the last Ferrari with a mid-mounted V12 engine. There you go. Ferrari's becoming uh, 
Domesticated. That makes me kind of sad, man. Yeah, it's losing it. It's the same with um, the Ford GT, the new Ford GT. It's got a V6 with a dual turbocharger instead of a huge V8, you know? Doesn't, yeah, that makes sense, though. Doesn't feel right, man. Uh, it's it makes sense. It's faster. It's yeah, like that. It that I get doesn't make the I, same noise. You know, it's I don't know. It makes a great noise. <laughs> it's yeah, but it's not phenomenal. a V eight. Uh, it's not a V eight. No, but then again, we're making fun of Ferrari for having V eights. That's yeah, yeah. That's yeah, I guess that's true. Or maybe it's a uh, six or twelve, and that's it. Yeah, or ten. Yeah, yeah V tens are still cool. That's uh, like the Lexus uh, LFA and the Audi. Yep. What's the name of the, the R8? Super? R8, yeah. The R8 Plus is a V10. R8 Plus, is that the new one? or? No, the Plus is the V10, and then the normal one is a V8. Okay. I think. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the Plus is the King. The King, the 650 horsepower, I think. I think. Something like that. So but uh, and then there's the uh, Porsche with the uh, flat six, as always. They're still doing it. Yep, GTs are still, or the GT3s are still naturally aspirated. Really? Naturally aspirated flat six. You're getting 520 horsepower out of it now. That's that's a cool engine. It is. Yeah. Six cylinder engines can be cool, man. It's a beautiful noise. Yep, they just got to be used right, but they can be cool. I like the straight sixes that uh, Beamers have or used to have, I guess. Yep. It's, uh, they're just so nicely balanced and they're great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and those transmissions were iconic. Iconic. The manuals, the, the like, apparently the, I mean, I've never driven an E30. I've always wanted to. But apparently the E30 is like one of the best transmissions you can, you can drive. And the, the new manual M2. Apparently, the manual transmission in the new M2 is is one of the most like flawless transmissions out there. E, E30 is uh, that that generation of BMWs is still one of the best looking ones, in my opinion. Yeah, you're on that team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be before yeah. they went all round and smooth, and you know, yeah, the box flare arches, and yeah, like the Those grill. Were a good time. Grill looked mean, you know. Oh yeah, just square. Yeah. Those were a good time. Everything's changing. <laughs> Time now the changing. grill is the the grill is the whole size of the front of the car now. Did you see that uh, one on the road for the first time? It's crazy. Did Did you see that uh, like electric car concept car? It's the ugliest fucking thing I've ever seen. From it's whom? Not, From BMW? BMW? BMW, yeah. Mm, have I? Let's see. BMW no. electric concepts. It looks like a beaver teeth. <laughs> or oh yeah, the, like the square-looking one. Let's see, um, the one with the huge intakes right in front of the tires. I, th I think we're thinking of the same one. The i next. BMW i next. Uh, yeah, that's um. It's pretty pretty dreadful. That is a car. <laughs> that is a car. <laughs> but that, that that is being produced, right? That's the IX, isn't it? I think that yeah. I think that's just it's pretty close. But it's you know, it yeah, just it's, looks it's nasty. the IX, basically. It's, just, uh, it's not good. It looks weak. It, it it looks wimpy. And I've heard bad things. I've heard the range is just disappointing and yeah. It kind but of that's that's the way of BMW. Have you seen the new BMW M three and M four? Uh the the upcoming ones? Yeah, the ones that have just been launched. They have the big ass beaver teeth as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. I see them. It looks nerdy. It looks like it's breathing through its like with its mouth open. Yeah. I like don't, when you I think of like a that. mouth breather in high school with like braces on. <laughs> right. like, that's what it looks like. Yeah. It's Yeah. It's, I'm not no, into it. It's not, it looks it's like not it's about to correct me on some scientific facts. Oh, actually, <laughs> <laughs> nah, not about it. Nah, but apparently it's mean. Apparently it's fun. It always will be. The M the M threes will always be fun. I like yeah. the headlight, but it you know the grill yeah. is no, no. 
Just too much. Your license plate shouldn't be cutting your grill in half. <laughs> no. That's that's what I always kind of find cool about uh, Alfa Romeo is that they put the license plate on the side. Yeah, they just gave up. You know what? Fuck it. License plate goes on the side. Yeah. yeah. Why we not? don't care. We don't care for the license plate. We, uh, we that's designed a pretty the car. Good Itali- pretty good Italian accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty impressed. I almost I had to check the webcam there for a second to make sure <laughs> it was still you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, not not a fan of the M3. Nah, new it's, one. Yeah, it's too much yeah, of a departure it, from from where they come from. It's always going to be a monster. It's always going to go sideways. It's always going to be loud. But apparently the M2 was the one to get of the last generation. Apparently the outgoing M2 is pretty. It had shoulders. It was a fun gearbox, apparently. Lightweight, rear-wheel drive. It was very basic from, if I remember the Top Gear review correctly. One of the last yeah. ones that... Uh, it's probably Chris Harris who drove it. No, no, no. It was the last real Top Gear. One of the last real ones. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I think Clarkson yeah. drove it and he said that it was just very basic you know back to basics it was all mechanical not a whole lot of computers and that it reminded him of the old uh, crazy uh, m3s from the 90s you know yeah so it should be man just uh not a not a very big safety net you know that's what it should be but i gotta get moving man i'm um yeah i gotta start charging things for tomorrow's shoot all right yeah nerdy excuse but hey no fair enough dude fair enough tell me uh what you want to promote and what you want people to... Yeah, just out. the YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com slash Kyle Meyer. Spelled probably the same way you spelt it on the title of this. Probably uh, or, or for sure. <laughs> oh, hopefully. <laughs> you never know. It's a complicated name. <laughs> Eight right, letters. Man. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, f- find Kyle's uh, channel, subscribe to his channel, and hit the like button and smash the bell. Smash and, you better know, smash it. Smash all that shit, man. <laughs> Tell everybody you know, <laughs> and also uh, find him on Instagram and uh, and all that good stuff. Sure. And um, same name, and website too. Lots of cool pictures of cars and uh, all kinds of good yep. stuff, man. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you once again, like we always do. Same to you, man. This was a good one. This was long. Yeah, it was. Let's see, we went for an hour and a half. That's pretty good. Yeah, an hour and a half is a good. That's a good time. Yeah, I'm man. into it. Sweet well, man. Looking forward I'm to, the to next follow one. your. Uh, I'm stoked to follow your uh, guitar podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you uh, if if you're uh, are are you a little bit into uh, rock music? I am willing to learn. Well, <laughs> I'll start with the yeah. first dinosaur rock guitar. One. I think it's a thirty thirty one. So it's kind of like right. a general one where we touch on a whole bunch of things. So, uh, cool. Yeah, if you're into it, you dig it. But, uh, Hell yeah. yeah! Thanks again, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank and, you, uh, man. Looking forward to the next time and still looking forward to uh, visit you sometimes, man. Same here. We, uh, hit you with a clap on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you for that. And, uh, thank you for <laughs> listening. And uh, see you next time. See you. Woo. All right. It was another fun one, eh? Go to ddrake.blog and go to the podcast page to find the show notes there or check the notes in the YouTube description if you're watching this on YouTube. If you want to help the show out, you can click on the affiliate links to the sponsors of the show. Today, that's that's APOS Audio, Alert for Food Allergies, and Amazon. Links are in the description and in the show notes of this podcast. I'm still working together with Dinosaur Dave on the dinosaur rock guitar alchemy profile it takes me more time to put those episodes together it's, uh, it's just a lot more work to edit them down and edit them videos and photos and all that stuff so the lead time of that is a little bit longer but we're still working on it and it's a lot of fun and it's very rewarding because i'm learning a lot about my favorite guitar players and bands if you don't know what i'm talking about search for the dinosaur rock guitar playlist on my youtube channel or on the website, Peter the blog, it's all there. And um, yeah, man. Thanks again, Kyle, for coming on, and thank you all for listening. And I will see you next time, everybody. Bye bye.